Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? Hope you're all doing well today. Welcome back to the channel. You asked for it. Uncle Red delivers. Yes, here we are again with some JavaScript for bug bounty hunters and ethical hackers. I'm going to focus on some specific things, specific exploits. I've made a little bit of an application, but it's not real, of course. It's just taken from what's supposed to be like a little bit of an application. So bear with me here. At the very top on line four, you can already see var secret API token. So API keys are important, but although of course usernames, passwords, if you find them, any kind of token, make sure that that token is supposed to be private though. That's really important. Also, you can check on line seven, var debug mode is false. Now, what is debug mode? Debug mode is, as you can see later on, it's going to log a whole bunch of stuff that it should not be logging. Then we go on to line nine to 12, where we're just going to define a data array. Here we have a user ID that's empty and a token that is empty. Moving on to line 14, we are defining a function. In that function, we are trying to log in, passing the parameters username and password. We can see on line 16, however, that we're going to make a request to post login, continuation on line 17, and then we're going to set the headers on line 18, and on line 19, we're going to do a request where that username is simply sent in plain text. You can also see that data.userID equal, uh, what am I saying? My apologies, of course. Uh, the XHR request itself is being made. And that XHR request is basically a request to the backend that contains that username and that password. Should never be sent in plain text, of course. Next up, we're going to go a little bit further onto line 20. We see if that request succeeds, just fill up that data object. Nothing really important here. And then on line 28, you can see that that XHR request fills in its body completely unprotected, simply sends it in clear text. Next up, we have the set debug mode. In here, we come back to what we've seen before. Debug mode equals status, and status is what we pass along as a parameter of the function. On line 37, we pass an if, and you may have seen ifs like this, or you may have seen them like on line 42. What's Stated on line 37 says if the debug mode is active, it logs some information. There is no else there. You can write it like this, or you can write it like in the function debug log on line 40. If debug mode is active, it does a console.log of the message. That message needs to be passed by us. Next up, we have a function which really shouldn't exist, get secret API token, even if that API token would have been a backend API token, not hard coded in here. If this function would return set API key, that, that function is a vulnerability in and of itself. So we're going from line 47 to 50 here. I included some little comments just imagine that other application logic is defined in here maybe you can find some hidden parameters some hidden endpoints maybe some hidden functions those can be important and we also expose some methods to the windows object for internal script as you can see window.login equals login the debug mode and the secret api token. I hope that helped a little bit in maybe analyzing JavaScript some more. If you want to see more of this, let me know because I love making these types of videos. It's really simple. You really just have to take a lot of time for JavaScript and investigate it properly. And if you see one of these functions, try to execute it in the console. Why not, right? All right. Thank you so much, amazing hackers. My name is DXSSRED and I'll see you in the next one.